Welcome to section 3 of the procedural voxel world generation tutorial. Before we start, uh, I know that we haven't yet discussed how to generate separate biomes uh, or multiple biomes in our project, but I do believe that without multi-threading the FPS drops will really destroy the experience and we are not going to be able to explore the biomes and see how they work. So in this section I want to implement the multi-threading for our code so when we are moving we are not experiencing those fps drops and as you can see on the right our map is being generated and our chunks are being spawned and uh, we are not spawning everything at once we are not experiencing uh, those fps drops when we are moving we can still move around our game we can still do stuff here and we are not experiencing any of those issues that we have in our current project okay this is our project if you are starting from section 3, then I would advise you to go back and watch from section 1, but you can also download this project. There will, there will be a link in the description of this video where you can download this full project. And now, we have one problem, that is when we press play, and we are in the voxel world scene, when we generate our world, the editor freezes, and we need to wait for the world to be generated. Now, this is not a serious issue because we could create a loading screen show the users the loading screen and it would be all good now let me open the stats window just to have some preview of what is going on in the previous video we have finished implementing our digging mechanic which it works pretty well if we start moving in one direction we are going to be able to uh, in a minute create more chunks and as you can see there was a slight fps drops and we weren't able to fluently move around the world what is worse is that we have been rotated around because our mouse input is not registered until later when we are back when our main thread is uh, freed up from the calculations that we were performing so we end up with a strange camera angle and we have no idea how it went up like this so this is a serious issue that is connected with the gameplay that the users of this voxel world can experience so we need to fix it one tool that you, we can use to check out what is going on is the profiler, the inbuilt profiler in Unity. Now this will not be the tutorial about the profiler, but rather I want to show you what is the issue. Now this first row is the CPU usage, and we have this big spike, and this happened when I have clicked our button. So if we select it, we are going to see in the hierarchy that we have been using the uh, behavior update and if we go down this is a standalone input uh, release mouse so this happens when we release mouse on our button and at some point we are going to go down to this hierarchy to see that when we clicked our button we have invoked our world dot the generate world script or rather method and on the right side we have uh, we can see that the total value is 99.7% of the usage comes from the world gener generate world method which then calls generate chunk data which then calls the by our biome generator process chunk column so because this is all done in the main on the main thread we are blocking everything else we have this big spike or rather big drop of uh, frames per second just to calculate all the data that we need to have for the generation of our world now this is the issue on the cpu next issue is our rendering because we need to render all the chunks that we are uh, creating so you can see that in the lower part there is the rendering and when we have clicked our button so this is the sp uh, spike in the cpu usage the F rendering after this rises because we are rising we are building all the chunks we are spawning them in our world up until some time later so this cpu rise is not that significant compared to the time it takes us to render all the chunks on our of our map on in our world so there are two issues that we need to handle first, first is generating the data and this we can easily do on a separate thread now the second problem is the rendering so we cannot really render our chunks from a separate thread we need to deal with it on the main thread and the only way to do it is by using a coroutine for example and rendering chunks and then stopping waiting a, bit, a couple of frames and then rendering again 
so we can do it by rendering one chunk per frame or rendering a batch of chunks per frame but basically we cannot really render all of everything at once because this will make this time of waiting very long as you can see it only ends here and the computational time required to create the data was pretty short but it produced the bigger the biggest fps drop so we have two problems that we need to mitigate in order to have a smooth experience okay so let's explore this what's going on when we start our game so this is start it starts working on the main thread so this is sort of a timeline and this is our main thread so let me change the color okay so here we are doing the input output we are doing the rendering and this is all happening on the main thread now this is all great but at some point we are implementing our own script this is world dot i think this was generate or something like this and this requires a lot of computational power so we are blocking basically this with the time it takes to generate the data for our chunks as well as to render those chunks so in this case we were taking the input on the main thread and here it was stopped because of those calculations took a lot of time so we had not been taking input here and next we end up when we are looking in this direction we suddenly end up looking in this direction after this fps drop and again we are taking the input on the main thread the same is happening with the rendering it is happening all in the main thread so basically what happens let me change the color for the rendering what is happening is that we are uh, having the default performance uh, of the rendering and then we have this big spike of the requirement of the uh, rendering performance because we are rendering all the chunks at once and then after we are done we are back in the uh, default level of what is going on so overall this is the issue this block of uh, computations required to generate our world that is blocking the main thread now there is a simple solution for this one part and this would be that we start another thread and this is why we would use multi-threading we start another thread and instead of putting this world generate here we would have our main thread continue working with our input and our rendering and our world would generate the data on a separate thread at the same time that we are moving around our world so here we are still moving around and when our data is done we can return this data by calling the main thread and saying basically hey thread one is done it is uh, putting the data back on the main thread and the main thread can perform any action that it needs to perform now as uh, for the io again as you might understand this would make this io continuously work so we are good to go here but again in our with our rendering we are not yet done because if we take a look at this we are going to have the issue where this thread will also put the uh, or rather main thread will also make this again spike so even if we generate this data on a separate thread still we are going to have our spike in the rendering until we render all the chunks so the uh, starting a separate thread fixes only the issue with our data generation with the rendering i am not an expert here but basically what i would do is use coroutines and by using coroutines we can schedule the rendering process of each chunk to be rendered per each frame so frame we would per frame render i think one chunk in our case but we could uh, also batch more chunks so we can do more but basic idea is that instead of rendering all of those chunks and i think here is 16 by 16 chunks for example we are rendering one chunk and after the frame we are going to render another chunk okay so let's take a look at what happens when we move in our end project we are loading more chunks and as you can see 
in our profiler, the FPS drop is not as severe. We couldn't notice anything in our game. And as you can see, uh, the rendering also rises only slightly because we are constantly putting new chunks, but we are doing this over a period of time instead of doing this all in one frame. We are doing this, uh, performing one chunk instantiation per frame. And this, those were less frames because those are those additional frames, not the whole map. So you can already see that even those spikes aren't that bad. So this is only about 12% or at the highest peak, it was 30, uh, it was 17%. Okay, as fun as it was exploring the profiler and exploring what is going on here, let's get back to coding and let's implement this logic into our project. Okay, we are in our project. In the underscore scripts folder, we should find out the world script. Let's open it up. Great. In our world script, we are doing all the work uh, connected with generating our world. So we destroy or remove our previous chunks. So the ch data and the chunks. Uh, so this, those operations could affect the performance. Uh, we are creating the data, which we are going to uh, create through on a separate thread as well as we are actually rendering our chunks. So what we could do is we could separate those two. Now here we are getting the chunk data, then generating our mesh data, and those uh, this operation is actually expensive. Next we are creating those chunks, and this is what happens in the on the main thread, so we need to keep it on the main thread. But we are here adding to our world data, chunk dictionary, add the data world position and the chunk renderer and not the mesh data. So we need to save this mesh data in a separate dictionary. So let's create an additional dictionary. The position is a vector 3 in, so let's type vector 3 in here. And we are going to use the same type as the key for our dictionary and the value will be mesh data. So let's call it mesh data dictionary equals new mesh data dictionary and we can control K control D to uh, uh, format it a bit and now we are going to simply add those mesh data to our mesh dictionary add and we are going to add the position as well as the data uh, sorry this was mesh data so now we can put all of this code in a separate coroutine so let's create at the bottom here an i enumerator. We're going to call it chunk creation coroutine. Okay. And as the input, we are going to pass this dictionary. So let's copy the type and the name and let's pass it to this uh, coroutine. So in this coroutine, we are going to have a for each loop var item in our mesh data dictionary. So this item will be of type key value pair of vector three and mesh data. We are going to have a create chunk method that takes in the world data item dot key, which is the position, and item dot value, which is the mesh data. And we are going to call yield return new wait for end of frame. So per each frame, we are going to render one chunk. Next, we are going to uh, have this if statement if is world created equals false and this will be a bool flag says so right click on this quick actions and generate this variable for example uh, we, it can be a property so if this is false we are going to set it to be true and we are going to invoke this on world created question mark dot invoke that we invoked after this for each loop uh, in the uh, generate world method instead we are going to invoke it so spawn our player only when our chunks are done generating and this will only happen at the first uh, generation of our world. Okay, so let's create this create chunk method that takes the world data item key and item value. Let's right click on this quick actions and generate this method. And let's rename the key to be position and the value to be mesh data. Okay. And in this create chunk method, we are going to basically uh, copy or cut out this code from our for each loop that looped through each pos the chunk positions to create in our uh, generate world method. And well, after we have added those mesh data to our dictionary, we can cut out this game object chunk object uh, 
So the code that actually creates our chunks and we can paste it into our newly created create chunk method. So now we need to access the position in a, because we are going to create game object chunk object equals instantiate chunk prefab data dot rolled position. So here we can add simply the position uh, and quaternion dot identity. Next, we are going to create chunk render or rather get it from our game object chunk render. So this is basically the code that we had previously, and we are going to get the chunk render. Uh, we do not need to. Uh, we still need to add to the world data chunk dictionary our data world position, which will be the position simply a chunk render. And at the end, we need to access the data to initialize the data onto our render uh, chunk render. So what we can do is we can access it by calling world data dot chunk data uh, dictionary, and we can access this position since we need to have it since we have added this to our uh, dictionary of the vector 3 int mesh data. So this is how we are going to create our chunks now and later on we are going to refactor it to a separate method so that we can uh, use some object pooling. Since uh, right now we are disabling the old chunks so right now if we go backwards we are going to spawn new chunks in place of the old chunks that already exist. Okay so last stop is to actually start this coroutine so we are going to Instead of calling this old world create, actually we do not need any of those. We are going to start after we loop through each uh, of those uh, positions of in our world generation data. We are going to call start coroutine and we are going to call our chunk creation coroutine. And in the as a parameter, we are going to pass the mesh data dictionary. Okay. So now we are good to go to test our new logic. So let's save it, file, save all, and let's go back to Unity. Okay. If we now press play and generate our world, we are not going to see much of a difference in the speed, but in terms of how it is rendered, you can see that it is rendered from the center. So as we have ordered it to be rendered from the closest chunks to the player, and the next chunks will also be rendered. Uh, and the, the rendering will be divided per multiple frames instead of all in one frame. So this should be a bit quicker, but probably uh, it will not give us the comfort that our multi-threading will add. And we're going to focus on adding the multi-threading, and I'm going to explain how to add it to our code that remains, so to generation of our data and to our mesh data, which actually I think takes a much more time to be generated. And we're going to talk about how to make this code multi-threaded in the next video. Okay, thanks a lot to all the patrons that are supporting me. Thanks to you guys, I can make those tutorials. See you in the next video.